Welcome to God, Sex, and You, a daily discipleship podcast on healthy sexuality. Here's your host, Purity Pastor, Dustin Daniels. Today we wrap up our series titled, The Gay Christian Identity, What It Is and How to Respond. My guest has been Joe Dallas, and our conversation is taken from his webinar series of the same name. Joe is also a conference speaker. He's an ordained pastoral counselor and the program director of Genesis Biblical Counseling, which is a counseling ministry for men dealing with sexual addiction and other sexual and relational problems. Today, we discuss homosexuality from several different perspectives. The first deals with homosexuality hitting home with a child admitting or thinking that they're gay. And the second aspect Is that from a physiological nature? Are people born gay? On today's episode of God, Sex, and You, we'll discuss three things. Number one, the difference in your children being minors or adults and gay. Number two, why homosexuality is not chosen but discovered. And number three, debunking the born this way lie. Today's show is titled, The Gay Christian Identity, Born This Way. Joe, let me bring it closer to home with this topic of homosexuality. Let's say my son or my daughter comes home and and they, they tell me that they're gay. What is a parent's first response? What should we do? What should we not do? Boy, uh... Again, it's going to vary from family to family, but let me offer just a few ideas. By the way, I do appreciate you mentioning my website because on my website I have videos set up to help instruct parents who who uh, learn that their son or daughter is involved in homosexuality. But in essence, you want to first clarify the priority of the relationship. I think if your son or daughter comes out to you and says, Mom, Dad, I'm lesbian or gay or bi, I think the first thing to do is reiterate the fact that, okay, not only do I love you, that's a no-brainer, but I want my relationship with you to stay intact. Mm -hmm. Let's not let this divide us. Now, if you have a teenage son or daughter saying, Mom, Dad, I'm gay, I want to date someone of the same sex or join a gay club, as a Christian parent of a minor, you have a responsibility to exercise your authority. So I don't think for a minute you should be so magnanimous as to say, well, I love you no matter what, so go ahead and do what you want. We wouldn't do that in any other area. We shouldn't do it in this area either. But in most cases, it's an adult coming out to the parents. And in that case, the parents should say, okay, let's not let this come between us. I'm going to have a hard time with it. I'm sure you knew that. You know me. You know that I'm not going to say I agree with something that I don't agree with. But at least help me understand what this has been like for you. Help me understand how you came to the conclusion that this is who you are and that this is what you want. Let's at least try to understand each other. And then let's exchange our ideas about how we determine what's right or wrong. You tell me how you determine what's right or wrong. Let me discuss how I do as well. Let's try to come to some understanding of each other. And that that really can open up a lot of good discussion. And, of course, what every parent knows is we cannot override the free will God has given our sons and our daughters. They have the right under God to make decisions, even if they are the wrong decisions. And when they make the wrong ones, We are in the company of the prodigal son's father, who basically says, I will wait, I will pray, I will let God continue to work in you, because I cannot soften your heart, I can't increase your faith, I can't convict you of sin, but he can. And then we wait for God to do his work and be there when that work is accomplished. Yeah, for those uh, of you listening who are parents who are dealing with, Uh, With that specific question, Joe has written an entire book on this, and it's called When Homosexuality Hits Home. Um, I would highly encourage you to buy that uh, resource and also visit joedallas.com. Like Joe said, there are 
um, a video, lots of videos to walk you through uh, these these questions. Joe, one of the things that that I really like what you say is that homosexuality is not chosen, it's discovered. Can you say more on that? Yes, and of course when I say that, I'm talking about the internal condition. Behavior is chosen. Um, you know, when somebody engages in homosexual sure. activity, that's not involuntary, that's very deliberate. But when someone realizes, oh my gosh, I am sexually attracted to the same sex, nobody, nobody asks to have that attraction. It is one of many manifestations of fallen nature. Just like you and I, uh, Dustin, we didn't ask to have a sin nature. Sure. We discover we have a sin nature. If we could turn a switch, we would turn off all of our wayward temptations. Amen. But uh, So in that sense, the sin nature itself is involuntary. However, that doesn't give us justification to act on those sinful tendencies. So when I say homosexuality is involuntary, I only say that because many Christians to this day approach it as if the homose- the person who was attracted to the same sex simply chose to have those attractions. If you think about it, you couldn't. You simply could not decide right now, okay, I'm going to be attracted to the same sex. Mm, okay, um, that's literally impossible. It's uh, and, and that itself shows that it's an involuntary condition. People realize usually early in life, around their preteens, they realize, "Oh my gosh, I'm sexually attracted to the same sex in the same way that my friends are attracted to the opposite sex." Now, what do I do? And uh, that is really the critical issue. It's not what your attractions are, but how you respond to it. So the, the sin nature that you're talking about, how the, it's, it's discovered, we realize the temptation that's in front of us. Is that the same thing as what the world is saying? You know what? You're just born with this, so indulge in it. Well, I think it really is, although the world is saying that if you're born with it, it's a good thing. The difference between the worldly view and the biblical view Mm. is that we never would say, if I was born with a desire, that alone must legitimize it, because we realize, hey, we're born in sin. And because we're born in sin, we don't determine what's right or wrong based on what we feel. We judge both what we feel and do by the standard God has given us in his written word. Um, oftentimes I, when I hear people say, well, I was just born this way, I'm reminded that there are a lot of studies indicating that alcoholism, chemical dependency, violence, even depression may have genetic roots. Well, nobody is going to say that those things are good if perhaps they were inborn. Uh, So why would we say that about sexual feelings as well? Um, Another point I have often made, just kind of as a side note on this, Dustin, I mentioned earlier in the show I repented of homosexuality back in 1984. When I repented, many people told me, you're gay, you're born gay. You can't be anything other than what you are. You need to be true to yourself. And I realized, well, that's exactly right. I do need to be true to myself. The question is, what am I really? First and foremost, I'm a born-again believer. And as a born-again believer, I have temptations that I say no to, and I have legitimate desires that I say yes to. But those desires don't define me. What defines me is my status as a child of God, and I need to be true to that status. And that is being true to yourself. After all, everyone, whether Christian or not, everyone has desires they say no to. Everybody driving down the freeway says no to the desire to to (laughs) ram their car into somebody when they cut them off. Exactly. Yeah. In, In any civilized culture, we recognize that we will have desires we say no to. Does that mean we're not being true to ourselves? Of course not. Just like the the woman or man who gets married, even the non-Christian, will usually take a vow of monogamy. 
and they vow, I will be faithful to you till death do us part. Now, I don't believe any married person who says, oh, I would never in my entire life feel attracted to anyone other than my spouse. That's not true. But we say no to those attractions. Why? Because we are true to who we are. I'm a husband or I'm a wife, and that is what defines and determines how I will conduct myself. The same is true of this. If you happen to have homosexual desires, that need not define you. The question is, what ultimately do you stand for? What ultimately is your identity? And how do you live that out with integrity? So well said, Joe. So well said. You know, the, the first time that we chatted several years ago, I when I learned, when I read your first book or the first book that I bought, I, I went through it. We did the interview. And then a couple of days after that, I literally bought everything that you've written. And I just, I want to encourage well, your heart. <laughs> I, I want to encourage those listening to do the same thing because we, your message of understanding, um, sexual sin and this topic of homosexuality in today's culture is so important for us to have a biblical, not a cultural, a biblical understanding of what God says that he is a loving father and he's put these parameters around us to protect us. And uh, Joe, I just can't thank you uh, enough for joining us today. Uh, once again, the, the webinar series, the, the webinar itself is coming up this Saturday. Uh, you can visit joedallas.com to learn more and get signed up for that. Before we go, Joe, for those listening um, with same-sex attraction, for those who are engaged in the behavior of, of homosexuality and call themselves a Christian for those parents that are struggling with, with kids and, and, and just the messiness of all of this, would you pray for those folks listening and um, let them hear your heart on this a little bit? I'd be honored to let's, let's pray Dustin. Father, we thank you for loving us, for calling us to be your own and for caring enough about us to give us clear guidelines as to what is in our own best interest. So I pray and we agree that all of us listening will have our hearts softened to the point where we recognize that your will must override any of our desires that are contrary to your will. We pray that you increase our faith in you as a loving father who knows better than we do what is best for us. We pray that you increase our faith when someone we love walks outside of your will. Increase our confidence in your ability to bring them back into your will and increase our wisdom as we deal with that person we love so much. We put ourselves and the people we love into your hands, recognizing that you who began a good work will perform it till the day of Christ Jesus. And for that, we thank you in his name. Amen. I would encourage you to keep pressing on with this topic of homosexuality and the resources that Joe Dallas offers on his website are excellent. And don't forget about his webinar coming up this Saturday, February the 3rd at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's from the Gay Christian Identity, what it is and how to respond series. It's what we've been talking about for the last several days. You'll be able to ask Joe questions personally. We'll be discussing marriages this Saturday that have been damaged by sexual sin. Well, tomorrow we start a brand new series with Christopher West. Christopher is a best-selling author, speaker, teacher, and he's a world-renowned expert in John Paul II's Theology of the Body. And if you're not familiar with the Theology of the Body, oh my goodness, you are going to love this. Well, thank you so much for listening to God, Sex, and You. And speaking of webinars, starting in March, I will be hosting several online weekly groups for porn and sex addiction. I'll be teaching out of my new book, The Sex Spiral. It's called Forgiven and Free from Pornography. So I want to invite you to visit my website as well at DustinDaniels.org. You can learn more and you can also choose what date and time work best for you. 
This is going to be a great way to ask your questions personally to me and uh, remain anonymous at the same time. If you have a question or comment about today's episode, well, I, once again, I would invite you to join the conversation at DustinDaniels.org. You can post your comments there. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Purity Pastor. You can also rate the show. Leave a comment for the show. Let everybody know what God is doing in your life with this resource. And if God has laid something on your heart, if Joe said something today that just really convicted you, send this to your friend. Send it to your pastor, your priest, your minister, your small group leader. Send it to your children. Uh, just a great way for people to know there are biblical answers for really tough cultural questions. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 8, blessed are the pure in heart, for they're going to see God. Walk worthy today, my friend, as you cling to Jesus. I love you, and I look forward to our time again tomorrow. 